Hello students, in the previous lecture we have discussed about the wave motion in detail. In our today's video lecture, we are going to discuss about the audio components like microphones, headphones and loudspeaker. First, we discuss about microphones. All sound recording starts with the use of microphones. Professional recording engineers use microphones in large number with the output from each microphone being separately recorded on a wide strip of recording tape. For example, 32 or more microphones are used to record a large orchestra. The placing of each microphone, the amplitude of recording from each microphone and the subsequent mixing of the sound from each track to from two track of stereo recording or four track of discrete quad recording or operations which requires great skill and experience. A microphone is a device of the class called transducer which converts sound wave in air into electrical wave of the same frequency and shape in the process of conversion. The microphone must make use of either the pressure of the air wave or the velocity at which the air wave moves. So we have two types of microphones, the pressure operator type and the velocity operator types. Let us now discuss about the characteristics of microphone. The microphone have three character, four characters, the output level, frequency response, impedance and directivity. The output level of a microphone governs the amount of amplification that must be available for use with the microphone. The output level of microphone is usually given in decibels preceded by a minus sign. The minus sign means that the output level is so many decibels lower than the reference level of 1 milliwatts for a specified sound pressure. Next characteristics is of frequency response. The frequency response refers to the way a microphone responds to different frequencies. It is a characteristic of all microphones that some frequencies are exaggerated and other are attenuated. For example, a frequency response which favors higher frequency means that the resulting audio output will sound more terrible than the original sound. Next comes the impedance characteristics of microphone. The impedance is an electronic term which measures the amount of opposition to an AC current, such as an audio signal. In a circuit, technically speaking, it is the combined effect of capacitance, inductance and resistance on a signal. Finally, the directivity of microphone. The directivity of a microphone is nothing but of the sensitivity to sound from various directions with relation to the microphone's input. Omnidirectional microphones captures sounds equally well from all directions. There are several types of microphones available in market we are going to see some of the microphones over here. First microphone, what we are going to see is of carbon microphone. The carbon microphone is not widely used these days, but it has been included here more for the sake of interest and completeness. The carbon microphone was developed in 1870 by Englishman David Edward it was the first reliable form of microphone and it was widely used for many years before being supplemented by other types that gave much higher level of performance. The basic concept behind the carbon microphone is the fact that when carbon granules are compressed, their resistance decreases. 
This occurs because the granules come into better contact with each other when they are pushed together by the higher pressure. The carbon microphone comprises carbon granules that are contained within a small container that is covered with a tiny metal diaphragm. A battery is also required to cause a current to flow through the microphone. When sound wave strikes the carbon microphone diaphragm, it vibrates. Ex a varying pressure on the carbon occurs. These varying pressure levels are translated into varying levels of resistance, which in turn vary the current passing through the microphone. The varying current can be passed through a transformer or a capacitor to enable it to be used within a telephone or by some form of amplifier. The frequency response of the carbon microphone, however, is limited to a narrow range and the device produces significant electrical noise. Often, the microphone would produce a form of crackling noise which could be eliminated by shaking it or giving it a small sharp knock. This could shake the carbon granules and enable them to produce a more steady current. Carbon microphones were an ideal choice of microphone in the early days of telephone. They were widely used in the telephone applications because they gave a high output which meant no amplification was used. Now let us discuss some advantages and disadvantages of carbon microphone. The carbon microphone has high output, simple principle and construction, cheap and simple to manufacture. The same class, it has a very noisy high background noise and on occasion it would crackle and it also has a poor frequency response and requires battery or other supply for operation. The next type of microphone which comes under our discussion is crystal microphone. Crystals which demonstrate the piezoelectric effect produces voltages when they are deformed. The crystal microphone uses a thin strip of piezoelectric material attached to a diaphragm. The two sides of the crystal acquire opposite charges when the crystal is deflected by the diaphragm. The charges are proportional to the amount of deformation and disappears when the stress on the crystal disappears. Early crystal microphones used Rockwell salt because of its high output, but it was sensitive to moisture and somewhat fragile. Later, microphone used ceramic materials such as barium titanate and lead. The electric output of crystal microphone is comparatively large, but the frequency response is not comparably good. Dynamic microphones plays a major role when we compare it with the crystal microphone. So, they are not seriously considered for the music market. The next microphone is moving coil microphone. Moving coil microphones are probably easiest to understand because they are basically built like a loudspeaker. A coil is glued to the rear of a membrane and there is a strong magnetic surrounding this coil. When sound wave hits the microphone, the membrane moves to the rhythm of the sound wave and the coil on its back move along with it. The relative movement of the coil within its magnetic gap induces a small signal voltage in this coil. So there is a microphone, a device that converts sound into an electrical signal.
the final microphone what we are going to discuss is wireless microphone a wireless microphone is pretty sleek sleeky no wire to trip on no cords to untangle it's just you and your mic out there taking on the world but that handles little mic would not do a thing for you without the other components of wireless system let us take a peek behind the scene to see what really makes a wireless mic work the basic principle behind a wireless system is converting the audio signal being input at the microphone into a radio signal that can be transmitted over the air to the receiver and then turning it back into an audio signal that can be output to the rest of the sound system this is all accomplished by fancy electronic circuit with long and complex name like programmable frequency divider and plc controller and intermediate frequency filter when we look at the transmitter of wireless microphone to get a signal from one place to another you need a way to send it cord mic send electrical impulses along a cord but wireless mic which are commonly referred to as cordless uses a transmitter transmitter and antennas are built into wireless microphones either within the handheld unit or within the body pack receivers once the transmitter sends the signal through the air then the receiver picks it up and send it on the rest of the sound system now comes the headphones headphones offers the possibility of the ultimate private listening experience they are small transducers can produce extremely low frequency tones when connected almost directly to the ear and their small size contributes to good high frequency responses the privacy extreme bandwidth and dynamic range possible at the ear makes the headphone a vital performance tool and a relatively low cost super fidelity personal listening system a headphone is defined as a listening device consists of either one or two earphones as receivers and a head headband to hold them in place a headset is essentially the same thing with a microphone attached to it headphones permits one way communication while headsets permits two way communication there are several types of headphones available in market one can identify three basic classes of headphones super aural circum aural and intra aural super aural is nothing but of those that sit on the ears usually pressing the external ear to the side of the head the old version of super aural headphone presented an uncomfortable hot backlight or hard rubber surface on the ear nowadays soft cushions are the rule some are foam or liquid filled and attempted an air tight seal to the irregular shaped external ear other are fitted with large pads of acoustically transparent plastic foam and are designed in such a way that an air tight seal is not necessary next is of circum aural the circum aural in which those with cushions that fit around the external ear pressing directly against the head itself the best example of circum aural headphone the external ear is not 
deformed through the contact with the unit. Next is of intraoral. These are in the ear or insert earphones of the type found in some aircraft or modes. All hearing aids that are supplied for private listening to portable radios, tape recorders and TVs. These classes describe headphones by their construction and how they are worn. But they tell us little about factors important to stereo listening. One important distinction among the headphones can be made on the basis of whether they exclude external noise and prevent leakage of music to the outside world. The former is important for satisfactory listening in a noisy environment. The latter might be important in hospitals, libraries or perhaps at home, where even the low level leakage of music can be a distraction to someone else. In order for a headphone to have effective acoustic isolation, it must provide a airtight seal with the external ear or the head and a totally enclosed cup over the ear made up of ridged and relatively dense material. These requirements eliminate headphones with electrostatic or electromagnetic membrane and pore cushion type insert the earphone that fit the ear can as slingly and can be very effective at acoustic isolation. Now let us discuss about the types of headphones. First we will discuss about moving iron headphone. The so called magnetic type or moving iron headphone uses the same basic principle as was originally adapted for telephone ear, ear piece or receiver that is we have seen in the microphone moving and microphone so as shown in the figure a thin flexible soft iron diaphragm is supported by the casting just clear of the tip of two soft iron pole pieces which are attached in turn to a small permanent magnet. Magnetic attraction causes the diaphragm to be distantly slightly towards the pole tips while still leaving a clearance of something less than a half millimeter. The incoming audio current passes through coils wound around the pole piece. In the presence of an audio signal, the varying magnetic field created by the current interact with that of the permanent magnet, varying the pull of the diaphragm and causing it to vibrate, thereby generating corresponding sound waves. Because of the inherent mass and stiffness of the metal diaphragm, telephone headphones of this type suffer similar limitation to old horn type magnetic loudspeakers, a natural resonance at a few hundred hertz resulting in the so called metallic quality. They also exhibit quite high harmonic distortion due to the fact that the diaphragm drives is one side or unbalanced. Now let us discuss about the loudspeakers. We have progressed a long way since early designer fixed a crude horn to a telephone earpiece to make the first loudspeaking telephone. Since then, many other drive principles have been adapted to further the quest for perfect reproduction. The science of loudspeaker has been refined to the point where the response of a drive unit at least at low frequency can be predicted with a great accuracy. Just as the choice of a microphone dictates what goes into the recording, the loudspeaker decides the quality of the output. <coughs> there are 
number of interrelated factors that must be considered in designing transducers for converting electrical energy into airborne acoustic energy. These include electrostatic efficiency, uniformity of frequency response, linearity of amplitude response, transient response, power handling capacity, size, durability, and cost. An ideal loudspeaker would have an electroacoustic efficiency approaching 100%. It would have an acoustic output response that is independent of frequency over the entire audible range. Would introduce neither harmonic nor intermodulation distortion into its output. Would faithfully reproduce transients as well as steady input signals would be capable of producing a non-directional radiation pattern. Also, it would be of a small size as, is, as it is impossibly considering the required acoustic output. Now, let us discuss about the types of loudspeaker. First, we will discuss about the <coughs> crystal loudspeaker. Roll salt crystal have the property of becoming physically distorted when a voltage is applied across two of their surface. This property is the basic of the crystal type of speaker driver. The figure shows the crystal loudspeaker. The crystal is clamped between two electrodes across which the audio frequency output voltage is applied. The crystal is also mechanically connected to a diaphragm. The deformation of the crystal caused by the radio frequency signal across the electrode cause the diaphragm to vibrate and thus to produce sound output. Crystal speakers have been imp impractical for reproducing of a full audio frequency range because the input impedance is almost completely capacitive. <coughs> thus, it is difficult to couple power into them. At high audio frequency, the reactants become lower and the relative amount of power is smaller. In the base range, stress on the crystal are very great and crystals have been known to crack under stress. Consequently, a crystal unit have found some use in tweeters and rarely even in this application because their response is not linear. Now, let us discuss about the permanent magnet loudspeaker. The figure shows the permanent magnet loudspeaker. It consists of a magnet that provides the fixed magnetic field against which the field from the coil operates. The magnet is typically made from ferrite. The next is of chassis or frame. The moving coil loudspeaker is generally built on a circular frame. Occasionally, these may also be elliptical. The frame forms the basis for the loudspeaker and provides its structure although it does not perform any active part in the operation. Next is of diaphragm or cone. At the front of the moving coil loudspeaker, there is a cone. This transfers the vibration of the moving coil to the air, presenting a large surface area. The loudspeaker diaphragm can be made of fabric, plastic, paper or lightweight metal. The outer part of the diaphragm is fixed to the rim of the frame. The extremity of the diaphragm often having some... <coughs> 
undulations to enable the main part to vibrate easily. Next is of diaphragm undulations. The diaphragm undulation enables the main part of the diaphragm to move freely and in a linear fashion. The next is a dust cap or doom. This part of the moving coil loudspeaker protects the voice coil from dust and dirt. The next is of voice coil and former. The moving coil is the key element of the loudspeaker. It takes the current from the audio amplifier and the current flowing generates a magnetic field which interacts with the permanent magnet and this creates a force which moves the coil and hence the diaphragm to which it mechanically attached creating the sound wave. Finally, the spider or suspension. This is a flexible corrugated support that holds the voice coil in place while allowing it to move freely. It is not present on some lower end loudspeakers but provide a very useful support ensuing the coil is properly centered. Normally, the space around the coil is limited to enable the maximum efficiency to be maintained and the coil needs to be free from touching the adjacent magnet. If it does touch, it causes a rasping sound to be heard as the loudspeaker coil moves in and out. So that's all with today's video lecture. See you all in the next video lecture. Thank you.